Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys checking out today's video. And got a little bit different video guys for you today. I wanna to have a conversation uh, specifically geared out there towards the anglers that are over 55 years old. Um, I know a lot of the uh, demographic, a lot of the people that watch my channel are over 55. So I really wanted to target this video specifically uh, to that age group, to all you guys out there over 55. Not to say if you're under 55, you're not welcome here, but uh, specifically I wanna, I wanna sort of uh, get into this uh, group of anglers here. I got a few comments I'd like to make and be curious to hear you guys comment after we get done with it. And also guys, a uh, big thank you out there to everybody out there that's been subscribing to the channel this past week and using all the links in my description. I just wanna let you guys know every day that how much I appreciate that. So uh, thank you if you're uh, participating in that little effort to help the channel out there. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, a um, couple of different things here. You know, if you're over 55 years old, specifically if you're over like 60, um, there's, it's sort of like a, it's, there's, there's a camaraderie that goes with that a little bit in the sport of fishing, bass fishing, and especially if you uh, have any background in tournament fishing, there's really a camaraderie with that. Because if you're over 55 or 60, um, I'm 62 myself, but if you're over 60 specifically, um, yeah, 60, 70 in that range right there, you had an opportunity to really see the evolution of the sport from the start of it. Um, if, especially if you're around 70, you know, 80 years old, something like that, you've really seen it. But for somebody that's over 55 or 60, you've seen, um, you've seen the sport grow from its infancy to where it is right now and everything in between with that. And that's sort of what I want to talk about a little bit in today's video. Um, you know, when I reflect back there, when I look back over the years, I've been fishing tournaments since the late seventies and I've been bass fishing since the mid, early to mid seventies. And when I, and, and I've fished professionally since 1986 and I've had a chance to fish Guys, all over the world, I fished in Japan, I fished Canada, all over the United States, um, fished almost every state in the country except for up in the Northeast, I mean, excuse me, up in the Northwest where there's not much bass up there. Um, so I've, I've seen it all, man, I've seen it all as far as the excitement of fishing that it can bring, Bassmaster Classics, you know, winning tournaments, all that type of stuff. And out of everything that I have seen or experienced in my own fishing, including winning Bassmaster tournaments and qualifying for almost 20 Bassmaster Classics and Forestwood Cups, the most powerful memories that I have in the sport of fishing, my fondest memories, the ones that stay with me, the ones that really resonate with me are those ones that, um, that I made specifically back in the 1970s when it was a simple time out there. And, Moreover than that, the time that really made a big pack impact in me is when I had my simplest boat. It went, back then I had a, a 16 foot leaking flat bottom boat with a nine and a half horsepower motor on it. I had a trolling motor up front. I built casting decks on it. Had a, I had one, uh, I, I didn't even have a depth finder in the back of the boat. I had one depth finder on the trolling motor like an old Lorenz flasher. And, and I had that boat for like four years. And guys, the, the memories that I made in bass fishing that stayed with me my whole life, as far as the truly powerful memories, came from fishing in that little aluminum boat with a nine horsepower motor. It didn't come from fishing in, you know, a 21 foot bass boat in the Bassmaster Classic or, you know, anything that came after that. It came, in that simplest time, the simplest time of my fishing is when the powerful memories came. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact when, when fishing is simplified down to its basic purest level, where it's just you and the fish and you don't have a lot of distractions from technology and all that type of stuff. I think that's when you really, uh, you really understand and find out, you know, what is really important in fishing and what's powerful in fishing. And if you're younger, you know, and that's not that I'm talking to the younger guys here, but the guys that are younger than us guys that are under 60, a lot of them, they don't understand that. And they don't understand that time in fishing, the simplicity that was in bass fishing back in the 70s and early 80s, because they've, they've, never, they've never known anything else. They, 
a lot of those people were born in the you know 90s or 2000s and they saw they were born into the modern era when it was a lot more complicated and complex and uh you know just different i mean that's the, the best way to put it and so i think there's a, a lot of times there's a disconnect because people a lot of the younger anglers you know they'll goof on and make fun of the older anglers out there that they're left behind or you know stuck in the past and all that type of stuff and that's because guys there's a lot to be said for certain periods of time as far as in your life or your sport that were more powerful than others out, out there you know the, than other phases of your life that's why people are drawn back to looking in the past a little bit more because a lot of times progression things that progress and things that evolve and things that change with the times it's not necessarily a better thing or a good thing out there um just in in terms of fishing guys i if i look at it as, as far as every decade that i fished because i fished in the 70s 80s 90s 2000s 2010s 2020s i fished all those particular decades and I, I can't think of any out there that was more powerful than the late 70s, something like that. And you, like I said, if you guys were there, you knew what I'm talking about. So from that standpoint, that's sort of what bonds us older guys together is that if you've been around that long, you, you, I, you know what I'm talking about. I don't, even, I don't even have to like describe it to you because you guys have been there and you know that. And that's why you have this common bond with, with older anglers out there. Um, one of the things that I know, there's a couple of different things that come with getting older that I know because I've tried, I've tried to be a really keen observer of human behavior and as I go through life and I, you know, because I've been through all different phases of age so far. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've seen out there a little bit is that, you know, people get, people get so caught up and they, they get so involved and they get so invested and they get so and so wrapped up in some of the more surface material aspects of bass fishing that they lose that grounded connection that you know the the pure grounded connection about being in tune about being in nature about being around the fish about feeling the wind in your face and your hair feeling the the cold or warm breeze in your face some of the the things that connect you directly to fishing and um, it seems like we lose that because I don't, I don't see people talking about that. Another thing that I don't hear anybody talking about anymore in the age of technology now is the, the mental side of fishing. You know, a lot of the older guys out there, they understand how important the mental game is. You don't hear that anymore. That's one of the things that I have noticed as a direct correlation with, with modern technology and fishing is that whole mental process and the, the it just does not play a part like it did before simply because um, when you're intimate with the fish and you're up close and personal with the fish and when you're fishing targets and when you're fishing shallow water with traditional bass fishing techniques it, it simply requires more of a thought process than if you're looking at an electronic screen out there so so that sort of went away a little bit with it but uh I know a lot of you guys out there that you, that are my age and you're older, you, you know, sometimes you have a tendency to, to, or some people do, in other words, that they're getting left behind and they're, they can't keep up with the times. Guys, don't feel like that. And I have never felt like that whatsoever because you don't have to keep up with anything that does not feel right to you. If what one person says is keeping up with the times or you're going to get left behind, that is just a matter of perception because in my opinion, I would counter that. It's like, okay, you guys, all the modern anglers, the people that use the technology that is frequent today, in my opinion, they are missing the boat completely because they're missing out on the intrinsic value of fishing. They don't have it anymore. And that's one of the things as the a group of older anglers can understand all you dudes out there that are 60, 70, 80 years old, you know what I'm talking about when I talk about the intrinsic value of fishing on a pure level because you were involved with it before it got overcomplicated. And, and the problem I see, especially now in the social media interaction I get, is that there's so many people out there, they don't have that, they, there's a part of their brain that doesn't fire when you talk about that. 
And I've been over and over and over on this, you know, with the electronic technology part of it. And inevitably there's 25% of the people that I, that I can tell by their comments and the derogatory nature of their comments and the snarky uh, attitude of their comments that they don't, they can't connect what I'm trying to tell them as far as this intrinsic part of fishing. And I, and I got thinking about that more and more and I realized that that can be a generational thing. That's just sort of a thing that they have, they've, that part of their brain has atrophied in the advent of modern technology out there. It's the same way with like uh, primitive technology. You know, it's like, you know, if, if you took, if you took modern man and you thrust them back a thousand years ago, say, say if you live in Missouri like I do now, and if you were all of a sudden thrust back in time a thousand years ago when there was nothing but the Osage Indians living here where I'm at right now, you would, you would be seen as probably the most ignorant person ever to walk the earth because you had no primitive skills. You didn't know how to flint nap arrowheads and spears. You didn't know how to make, you know, bow drill fires. You didn't know how to smoke meat. You didn't know how to stalk and track game. You know, you didn't have any skills whatsoever. And, um, <laughs> that that's what that's sort of the same thing that we've had now we've had because we've we our tra our society has transitioned where those particular skills are not valuable anymore and it's just sort of the same with fishing out there and as far as fishing goes i just don't think that's a good thing and that is why the comments that i get on my channel it's like when you when you, when you, if you look through my comments on some of my more hot topic videos, like, you know, it could be, you know, technology and fishing or, you know, anything that I say that seems that is, I, that is labeled as sort of old school. It's like every time that comes up, you can see the, you can see definitively the demographic that responds to that in a positive light and the demographic that responds to that in a negative light. And I think a lot of it is just, it's just, it's lack of awareness, it's lack of education, it's, uh, it's lack of the ability to want to dig into the past and understand a little bit of the history of it. And it's just, it's getting sucked into a lot of propaganda when it comes to it because, you know, bigger, better, fancier, bigger, bigger things, better things, fancier things are not always better, especially when you talk about the, you know, the, the part about fishing with there. So one of the things, one of the things I want to say here about to the older anglers out there is don't, don't ever get discouraged. Don't ever get down that you are not keeping up with the times. Don't get discouraged and go, don't get down that you may not catch as many fish as you used to. That's just the sort of the natural progression of, of, uh, you know, getting older in anything you do and consider yourself very fortunate. If you can, if you can resonate to what I'm talking about here, as far as the way fishing used to be, um, if you can understand that and resonate with that, consider yourself very fortunate to be able to say that you were a part of that because that has been lost to a large degree. There's still a few people out there. I've got a good friend of mine that's in his twenties right now. And he's like, he always tells me that he was born in a different time because he sort of was on the same page as I am with it. So it's not like everybody's out there, but far too often, and I think a lot of it, and I, I really feel sad for a lot of the college and high school anglers out there and a lot of the anglers that are not like now in their 30s because of so many of those people have not had the opportunity to understand that and they, they're oblivious to that. and and as a result of being oblivious to what those things were like before, they miss out on so much about what, what is so powerful about the sport that you guys that are older understand out there. And the um, thing I want to really clarify here is that people seem to think that if you, if you gravitate towards things in the past, I'm talking specifically about term, about bass fishing here, they, they seem to think that if you constantly go back to things in the past, that some, somehow you're inferior. You're, you're like an inferior person because you're living in the past and you can't move on with the future like that. Guys, there are some things in life that it is an, the advancement, the natural progression of things that advance things forward um, is not a good thing. 
it's not a positive thing. It's a step backwards. And that's the way that I see it, what's happening with bass fishing right now. The advancements that we have in the sport are perpetuated by the tournament organizations because the tournament organizations set the stage for the rest of the entire bass fishing industry out there. All of the trends, all of the rules, the regulations, all that type of stuff are set by tournament fishing. And tournament fishing has enabled a lot of those negative aspects to creep into the sport little by little, generation after generation, till you get to the point now where it's unrecognizable. I can tell you right now, guys, and I can make this statement because I've been there. I've been in the, through the 70s. I've fished all professionally for the last 40 years. I have been there. And I can tell you right now, without a doubt, that the sport of bass fishing in 2024 is not anywhere as good or as enjoyable or as relaxing or as just cool as it was back in the 70s and early 80s. It's just not. And that has came as a result of commercialization, overcomplication, too much technology, too much money in the sport, things getting too expensive, too many people participating in it. There's a lot of different things out there <clears throat> that have contributed to that. So the point I sort of want to make with this when I'm speaking to the older guys out there is that, you know, we're, I mean, we're, yeah, we're sort of a, a breed that's, you know, that's passing on through the generations, but have, if you have any chance at all to like share some of the stuff that we're talking about here with some of the younger people out there, try to take the opportunity to do that because man, they just don't know what they're missing out there. And like I said, so many of the people now, it's like the, some of the, so many of the newer, younger anglers, college, high school anglers, their parents are still pretty young and their parents are even young enough where they weren't even there. They don't quite understand what we're talking about here. And if you're, if you're a product of the two thousands and a product of the mid to late nineties, and you don't have a lot of awareness before that time frame. you can't really relate to what I'm talking about here. That's just, that's just a different generation out there. But um, for those of you that can, or those of you that are, you know, over 60 out there, you can relate to what I'm talking about here. So anyway, guys, just sort of a wide ranging conversation. I'm not really sure what I wanted to say with that. I just, I just wanted to, to basically touch base with you older dudes out there and let you know that, it is a fraternity. It is a club. Um, that's one of the reasons the older guys bond together when you see each other at, the, at, a, at a tournament because you, you sort of get this look, almost this nods like, yeah, you've been there. You know what's going on. I, I've got guys like that, friends like that too. I'll, there'll be some old guys that I'll see at a tournament, like here in, if I'm fishing a BFL, guys that I haven't seen since, uh, since the 80s. And you look at them and you know that they were there then. And there's like this sort of it's just this nod of approval it's just like yeah you you're you know veteran of the trenches you, you've been there done that you sort of know what it's all about but anyway guys just wanted to run that little video by, past you guys hope you all are doing well and we'll check in later see you